Hello everybody and welcome back to my Eurovision channel. My name is Chris and if you haven't uh, been on my channel before you can play around, see what uh, I've done before, some reactions to some songs. Uh, but today I'm going to be doing my tier list of the Eurovision 2023 songs. I'll be covering Eurovision throughout the season. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe um, and comment on this video because of course I know that everyone has different personal tastes and will have different placings for each artist this year. So with that in mind, let's jump straight into the tiering. I know that already mine will be quite different to the traditional Euro fan uh, in the fandom. Um, so yeah, these are randomized pretty much um, where we start and where we end. And we are starting with Armenia. So for me, um, I'm going to try and explain a bit and very shortly on each one because I know it's very long if I explain everything. But you get the gist after a couple. So for me, Armenia, um, I understand why people really enjoy it. Um, it's got a very, you know, catchy beat that I think a lot of people will get. It's got that traditional element. Um, it's fun. Um, however, for my personal taste, it's not my style of music. I don't really uh, click with it. Um, it's not in my... Yeah, it's basically not what I would listen to. And even on the Eurovision stage, while I think it can be a lot of fun, it's still not going to be one of the songs that I'm going to be really looking forward to. Um, however, I do recognize the quality in the, the entrance, but for me personally, I'm going to put it as average. And just to explain, um, I expect these to be broadly in line, probably more and good and average than the other parts. But top is like my top, top songs, the one that I love, the ones that I love. Great are songs that I think are wonderful and I'm really looking forward to seeing and hearing. Good are songs that I recognize the quality of and also match my own personal taste to an extent. Average, you've just seen an example. I think it's a fine song, a good song that people will enjoy. Not really for me. And not for me is clearly not for me, way out of something that I typically would enjoy um, and therefore something that I will classify as such. So moving on from Armenia, we actually uh, still have a similar-ish um, song in terms of my personal taste. We're on Greece next. And personally, for me, Greece, while I get that a lot of people will enjoy it, and I have no doubting the quality of Marina Sati and her performances, Greece is just not a song that gels with me personally. Um, uh, so Zari, I yeah, I it just something doesn't click with what I enjoy from music, um, but. I actually think that it's slightly better produced maybe overall than Armenia, but I still have to put them both in, in similar spots because they're, they're the same for me, essentially. They're songs that I, I don't need to hear. So they go into my average tier. This might change at the end if I find too many in the average are good. Um, next, Lithuania. Uh, and again, <laughs> we're starting off like... <laughs> <laughs> with very uh, similar um, things for my taste, but for different reasons. Uh, again, I really recognize the, the beat behind this uh, Luktalk um, by Sylvester Belt. Um, I think it's very modern, very with the times. I think we're going to have a great time dancing to it. Um, but it's it still doesn't, like, there's, um, in terms of the actual song itself, I find that the chorus is a bit flat. So I don't, I don't feel like I get a lot out of the chorus, and I know that's the, the intention. Um, but for me, I feel like I, I need a little bit more. Um, having said that, I do enjoy personally this style of music a little more than Armenia and Greece. Um, so I'm going to put it into the good category for me. Next, we have uh, Iceland, Hera Björk, uh, with Scared of Heights. I find this extremely dated, not in the same way as Gustav last year, which I loved. Um, I just find this is dated, but hasn't 
isn't back in fashion yet and hasn't modernized uh, really at all. Um, so I, I can live without the Iceland song. Um, I recognize that Hera Björk is an icon and I know that we'll get him, you know, great vocals and amazing performance, but just personally, for, it's not a song for me. I don't enjoy it that much. And therefore it's going to be the first going in the knot for me. Um, after that, we have Austria. Uh, with Kaleen, We Will Rave. Now here we have a song that is nostalgic. We go back to the, the 90s, early 2000s, maybe even the early 90s as well, like a, a decade of music essentially. And I think it's been modernized really, really well. I am not generally a fan of uh, girl pop songs or dance break songs, um, as you can see with Armenia and Greece, um, and to an extent Lithuania. Having said that, I think Austria out of the ones that are going to come up in the, that category is probably my favorite, I would say. Um, and for that reason, I'm going to put Austria as my first uh, into the great category. And next we have France with uh, Slimane and Mon Amour. Um, and I hear this very frequently because I live in Belgium, it's on the radio, so you know, if, if I'm in a shop, uh, you'll suddenly see man will come on. Um, so when I hear it in a shop, and even though I recognize that live, it's a completely different story and he can probably bring a lot to the stage. I just do not click with this style of song at all. Um, it's really not for me. Um, and that's not to take away from Sliman's talent at all. Uh, it's clear that he has an incredible vocal, um, an incredible stage presence. I think he's a great artist that will appeal to a lot of people. I'm just not one of those people. And so for that reason also goes into Not For Me. Next, we have Estonia with five minust and pulup, pulup. And I will never be able to say the name of the song. Um, so this is an interesting one because typically this is the type of song that I think I would like. And I did enjoy it on first listen. But when I'm reflecting on the Estonian national final, I th I'm thinking more and more I preferred Ollie's song um, from this year. It just gelled with me more and then when I come to look at this uh, song from Estonia from Five Nunust and Pulup, I appreciate the folk elements, I appreciate that it's in Estonian, I like the dancing, I like the stage presence, um, but the song itself, I just feel it's it doesn't do a lot for me. So for that reason, I'm going to put it in good because I still prefer the music uh, over the ones below, um, but it's just not hitting those heights for me that I, I, I would enjoy. Um, then we come on to Moldova. Uh, we, I'm expecting this to be revamped a little and we'll see also the um, how it's staged in Malmo, but they have a lot of work to do, if a lot of work to do if they want to qualify. <laughs> Um, so it's Nat Natalia Barbu and uh, with In the Middle, just again doesn't call to me, um, not something I'm really enjoying uh, listening to, I find it quite difficult to listen to and it's often a skip on my playlist. So Moldova also goes into the not for me category. And next we have Croatia with Baby Lasagna and I mean this has a universal appeal, right? The message is incredible, I love the story, I can relate to it so much. Um, I really like him as a person. I get that the Dora performances weren't perfect but we have to remember he had half the time to prepare as everybody else and he has a lot of time now to get ready for Malmo. Um, so I think we can expect a, an elevated performance from Dora. Um, there will be nerves, of course there will be nerves, but just the song, the atmosphere, the feeling it gives me personally, this is definitely one of my top songs. Um, I, I really, really enjoy it. I love it so much. So it's going into my top. That's Croatia Baby Lasagna with Rimtim Tagidim. 
Um, next we have, oh, we have a bunch of amazing songs coming. Um, <laughs> let's see where I rank them, but they're all very highly ranked in the odds and on the scoreboard. Um, next is Norway uh, with Gata and Ulvehem. That's in a Swedish accent. Sorry, Norwegians. <laughs> I can't do your accent properly. Um, okay, so Gata and the song Ulvehem, I really click with. This is my style of music. I love the instruments. I love that there's the element of folk there. I like the traditional in Norwegian instrument. I forget the name of it, but I really enjoy it. Um, and Gata, I just can't say enough good words about that live performance in the national final. Norway is consistently near my top in Eurovision, no matter what it sends. Um, and this year is no exception. So it's also going into my top tier. Next, we have Joost Klein with Europapa, um, which of course is such a huge hit already in the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, Germany probably extending a lot wider than that. It's got tens of millions of views already on YouTube. Um, and to be honest, the, the sound and the genre is not something I would typically enjoy or would listen to. However, Yust has managed to make it accessible. In a similar way to Marina Sati, actually, with, with her music, um, made it accessible to someone who is not someone who likes that genre. And I think that's the key to success in Eurovision appeal beyond your genre. Um, and Yust has done that. And with if you've seen my reaction video to the Netherlands, you'll see just how much this song has affected me. Uh, just listening to it, the story behind it, and used himself, uh, what a character. Um, so the Netherlands, although not my genre, I think he's done the best possible uh, that he could do and therefore goes into my great category. And this is for me personally, of course, I know other people will have this at their top top, but this is me. <laughs> Next, we have Angelina Mango, and I always get confused, is Angelina or Angelica? Whatever. It's with La Noia, and it's Italy. I for, Can I say, first of all, I'm so happy that Italy is sending a female artist. I really like the song, um, and usually, well, the general tendency over the past, let's say, five, ten years is that I haven't really enjoyed the... Italian songs, apart from Monoskin. Uh, again, my genre. Um, this song is really fun. Um, the more I listen to, to it, the more I enjoy it. And I think that's a great sign. Um, but again, it's not my typical genre of song that I would tend to like, uh, but it's appealed to me beyond the bounds of the, the genre it's in, and I really like it. So I am going to put it also into great. Then we have Switzerland with Nemo and The Code. Um, I personally think this is a masterpiece of genre bending and also weaving the, um, the question of Nemo's gender identity into the song is simply incredible. And I really hope that this can be pulled off on stage and shown very well. Um, I mean, We'll come to another non-binary artist in a bit, but at the fact that the non-binary artists are the, the ones that are melding genres together in very different ways. But um, I really appreciate, particularly with Nemo, he's mel melded opera, pop, rap, uh, you name it. There's so many things in there that are just can appeal to so many people and the way they're melded together is incredible. So Nemo goes into my top as well with Switzerland. Um, definitely in my top songs. Next we have Poland with Luna and this is a grower of a song for me. Uh, first time I listened to it, I've, you know, okay, a little bit biased because it's in Ireland semi-final on, on the same half and I was like, no, don't be good, don't be good, don't be good. <laughs> but um, unfortunately it is. Uh, not unfortunately, I still think both Ireland and Poland can qualify. Um, but uh, yeah, I really enjoy this song the more I listen to it. She's a horrific chess player, we know that, <laughs> but um, the song itself is soft, easy listening, chilled. I quite enjoy it. And um, conversely to 
I would say, let's say Just um, and Colleen and, uh, and Angelina, Angelina, Angelica, Angel one of the two. <laughs> they have taken genres that I don't enjoy and elevated them. Poland has taken a genre I enjoy and made it just exactly what I enjoy. Um, for that reason, I'm going to put it for now in good. This may change, but for now it's going into good. Um, but I really like the song and I really like that style. Next, we have Oli Alessand uh, Oli Alessandra, Jesus, Oli Alexander from the UK um, with Dizzy. And when I first heard this, I thought, yeah, it's nice, nice radio song. But then I saw the live version. If you haven't seen it, uh, the Vivo Studios live version of Oli, Oli doing this and performing it, check it out because there is so much potential of what he can do on stage with this song. Um, so that has elevated this song a lot for me. Um, and therefore, Oli has, and I, I mean, I didn't doubt this would happen, um, but Ollie himself has elevated it into a great song for me. Um, it would have been good or average, but, you know, again, he's elevated a genre that I don't mind into a song and a performance that I really enjoy. Next, we have Denmark, Saba Sand. Um, I don't know about what it is about this song. Um, I know that like sand, sand, I can't sing, but you know, you know what I'm getting at. Um, I, I don't know what it is about it. I just really enjoy it. I really enjoy listening to it. Um, and I really hope Denmark can qualify. It's very going to be very tough, but I hope they can find a way. And so Saba is also going into my great category. Um, I just really enjoy the, the song. And I, I can't explain more than that. Uh, I just think it's fantastic. Um, next, we have Georgia. Uh, Nutza, Nutza, sorry, my voice went there. Nutza with Firefighter. Uh, so this is a song that is has only recently come out and it hasn't really gelled with me yet. So there's still a little bit of listening I have to do with it. It's not my genre and it hasn't, become kind of accessible to someone like me yet. I don't feel it. Maybe when I see some live performances, maybe pre-parties, it'll my, my view will change. But for now, it's going to sit with Greece and Armenia in average for me. Next, we have Iko from the Czech Republic with Pedestal. I am not going to look at the national final performance for this. I'm going to look at the song and the music video because I don't think the national final in this case was representative. And this is a style of music I love in general. Um, I really like uh, the, the song. I really like uh, the, the way it's performed uh, in the studio version and the music video. And I really hope that um, the revamp and the upgrade that we'll have in just a few days uh, will elevate this for me even further. Um, but for now, I'm putting it into my good category. Next, we have, I think it's, yeah, it's Serbia. It's Teodora um, with Ramonda, the flower, Ramonda. Um, ballads are not my thing in general. Um, I do appreciate this performance, though, and the live performance, and each time I hear it, I do feel like it, improves in my own rankings and I feel like it gets better. So I actually am going, I ha it would have been sitting at average or not for me, but just with the way Teodora performs it, I have to put it in good. Next, we have Megara, San Marino. I'm maybe lucky that I haven't heard last year's song, Arcadia, um, but I just really have a lot of fun with, with this song. Um, I mean, live, sure, vocals can be better, but at the same time, um, I really enjoyed it. I love this kind of music, and uh, I hope that there's some path out of the second semi for them, but I don't think so. Um, nevertheless, for me personally, um, Megara goes into the great category. I already think I'm gonna have to do some switching and swatch, swapping here. 
Next, we have my home country, Ireland, with Bambi Thug and Doomsday Blue. And the first time I heard this, when we had the Irish songs for the national selection, I was already sold. This was my number one for the Irish selection when everyone was wanting Gotubbin. And I was like, no, I really like Bambi Thug. Why can't we have Bambi? And then on the night, Bambi was definitely the, the standout performer um, and just the creativity, the artistry. And as I said, melding the different genres like Nemo, but in a very different way. I mean, you start heavy and then you kind of go through this period of calm and then you go heavy again and then calm and then, you know, this very angsty climax. Um, and, you know, yes, it's Ouija pop as, as Bambi describes it themselves, um, but I love it. I'm here for it. This is definitely a song that I really hope qualifies. Um, I know it's going to be very tough, um, but I have complete faith in, in Bambi and their artistic vision. Go straight into my tops. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just love it. And I'm really proud of Ireland for sending this, this, this entry. Next up, we have uh, Sarah Bonici from Malta with Loop. Um, again, girl bop song, not my style of music. Um, is it better than In the Middle and Scared of Heights? Yes, uh, yes it is. Um, does that mean that for me personally, I think it's you know something that I would listen to? Unfortunately not at this stage. Maybe I need more time with it. Maybe pre-parties will change my mind. Um, but at the minute, it's going into Not For Me. Then we have another ballad, Yolanda from Portugal. Like I said, not my style of music in general. I, I appreciate the, the Portuguese elements in this. Um, and I, oh my God, her vocal is incredible. That I cannot take that away from her. Just for me, the song is not something that grips me. I, am, I don't, you know, I don't relate to it. I, I, I think I can relate to the underlying meaning a little bit, but it kind of matches with what I've already said about Armenia, Greece and Georgia. Uh, so it's going into average for me personally at this stage. Uh, it may all change when and if uh, um, I'm listening more to the, the songs or if I see Yolanda at any pre-party. I don't think she's announced that she's going to any yet, unlike Mimi Cat last year, but we'll see. Next, we have Germany and Isaac with Always on the Run. Um, I Surprisingly, I actually quite like this song. <laughs> um, I don't know why. I, I, I just, uh, I get that it's generic. I just find his vocals really, really cool. And what he did with no staging, pretty much, in the German national final um, was pretty pretty nice as well. I just really like the song and I like his vocals. Like, they're, they're great. So for me, it's going into the good category. I like it a lot. Next, we have Raven from Slovenia. Now, this is a song where I really think it's so important that on the night, Raven gets the message across of what this song is about, uh, about Veronica, uh, because if she doesn't get the story across, I think that this can be lost a little bit in what's going on around it. I have no doubt that Raven will be incredible live, vocal-wise, but I fear a little bit that the message behind the song gets lost in the story of Veronica and what happened to her just will not it'll just fall aside because, um, excuse me, I, I just, I, I fear for that. Having said that, I really enjoy the song. I enjoy listening to it. Is it in my tops? No. Do I think it's great? Mm, not either. So it's going into good for me because I think it fits quite well with the ones I already have there. I think with Teodora, with Sebastian Belt, uh, sorry, Sylvester Belt, etc. Okay, we only have a few left to go. Sweden is next with Marcus and Martinez. Yes, the staging is great. Um, the song, unfortunately for me, is a little bit forgettable. Excuse the pun. And um, I mean, I don't mind it. It just, and it doesn't bother me. I just 
don't get anything from it. It doesn't give anything to me. Uh, but they're going to be at some pre-parties. Maybe they'll change my mind. They, also, they seem like such nice guys. Um, but the song itself, they're going into my average category. Next, we have Belgium, Musti, where, well, I'm in Belgium. I'm in, um, <laughs> I'm in Brussels. Um, and Musti is also in Brussels. I saw he's touring around the city uh, over the weekend, uh, going to different places. Um, I was sick over the weekend, so I could not go and, like, you know, doorstep him. Um, but uh, let's move on to the song, which is the most important part. I know that a lot of people feel that this first two minutes are you know, very slow burn up to, uh, you know, a big climax and that it may get a little bit lost, people may get a little bit bored. I actually really enjoy it. I mean, this is what Belgium is really good at. The music scene in Belgium is so strong. Like, it's it's incredible what type of music you get produced out of here. And songs and artists that you probably don't realize are coming from Belgium are Belgian. Um, and like I mean you obviously have Stromae the most famous one but you also have Lost Frequencies uh, you have Dotan I don't know if many people I'd said the Benelux countries know that or uh, know, know Dotan but um, yeah there's there's quite a few um, this song I love it I actually don't find that the two first two minutes are lost I feel that it the slow build is actually really well paced I find that after a minute it starts to pick up a little bit you can feel something is about to happen and then just that drop like that last minute of like just before the party's over and like the choir behind I just think it's incredible um so yeah this is definitely going into my top and this is the first time Belgium has been in my top five um since uh Blanche with City Lights I really love that song Next, we have Australia. Australia, Australia, Australia. I am lucky I did not know and I have not heard 2000 and whatever and I did not know Electric Fields. So for me, therefore, it's actually a clean slate with Australia. I have had no idea what to expect. I really appreciate the vocals. I love the message. I love the traditional elements in um in the music and l lyrics, uh, partly the, Abor the Aboriginal language being brought in there and the didgeridoo. I know it's called something different in um, the Aboriginal language. I don't know what that is, apologies, uh, but I really appreciate that. And Australia for me started as average, um, but it has grown on me. Um, I think it's gonna have a challenge to qualify um, because it's a grower of a song and songs in your vision need to hit you. But from what I've heard, uh, especially Zachariah is going to have an amazing stage presence. He seems to like, you know, be very well seen as stage presence and vocals, etc. So I expect a lot from Australia on the stage. Nevertheless, the song personally goes to good for me. I quite enjoy it, uh, but it doesn't elevate beyond good. It's my genre also of song. Like I typically like these kind of mellow songs. Like I'm a mellow song and a rock song kind of guy. I like those types of music in general. Um, so this is good for what it is. Um, next we have Ukraine. Uh, for me, it's hard. It's definitely much better than last year. I had Ukraine very low last year. Um, I quite like the chorus. Um, I like Jerry Heil, I like the imagery. I think the stage performance is gonna be good. Uh, I don't mind the rap, uh, but I find personally that Nemo's rap is much better than um, the rap on the Ukrainian song. Um, Teresa, Mar Teresa Maria, or Maria and Teresa. Can't remember which way around. Um, but still, I mean, I find this song fine. Um, I would also add it to my good songs. Next we have Luxembourg with Tali and Fighter. Not my style of song, not my genre. The chorus actually takes it out of the not for me category simply because I quite I, I can listen to the chorus and enjoy it. 
Um, but just in general, this is not my style of music. I, I don't really enjoy it that much, as you can see from the rankings in general. Uh, and I'm not typical at all of the Euro fandom. Uh, so yeah, for me, uh, Luxembourg is going into the average category for now. We'll see when, whenever we come around to the Malmo, how it's staged and how it's performed, but it's not there yet for me. Um, it may even go down to the not for me category. Next, Spain. Um, Thora. I love the message. I just love it. It's like, I love this, this idea of reclaiming terms. Being from the LGBT community and, you know, growing up, when I did, when queer was seen as such a negative word and like, oh, you're such a queer, but you know, you had these like insults coming at you. Um, I love the idea that now where we are in 2024, the term queer has been reclaimed as a positive term. And I love that um, Nebulosa have gone for this message with uh, Thora, which translates roughly as, as, as vixen and can be much more vulgar. I know, um, but you get the idea of what it's supposed to mean, but it's kind of like, let me be that, let me be a vixen if I want to be a vixen, and uh, let's, you know, women stand up and reclaim the term for ourselves, and don't let men dictate, uh, you know, that we're thought us. and I completely, I love it, I love the message, I think it's great, I really enjoy the song, yes, the vocals weren't great at the uh, end, but I like the vocal tone in general, like this low key style. So for me, Spain is going into great. Love it. Next, we have Albania um, with Bessa and Titan. And actually, when I heard the Albanian selection, usually in the past few years, Albanian songs, even Ronella, have not been for me and I haven't really enjoyed them. Um, I heard the Albanian selection and the what's it called Nesindore or something like that uh, I can't remember the name of the original song in Albanian anyway I actually quite enjoyed it I thought it was good um, for what it was uh, something that appealed to me beyond my typical genres uh, however with the revamp and the English um, moving into English it's again lost a bit of appeal to me I know it's probably going to qualify because it's Albania, um, but uh, yeah, it's just not, uh, it's again, sorry Albania, <laughs> but it's not, it's not for me. Um, and I actually think you should, it should have been kept in Albanian. Um, I think it was a mistake to, to move it into English, but again, I'm one person. It's my personal opinion. A lot of other people may think differently. Next, we have Cyprus, Celia Capsis. Um, with Liar, I mean, she performs the socks off this. Uh, she did a live on Instagram yesterday that was, uh, I mean, she's trying to interact and have fun and, you know, really try and get into the community a bit. Um, there's a story behind the song, uh, which is not necessarily the best story in the world. Um, going from, you know, the Russian national selection 2022 before they were booted out um, to Greece last year when the artist was not selected and now Celia has the same song <laughs> with uh, from Cyprus and to be fair she can perform I mean I have I think that her choreography is going to be incredible again my personal taste is that I don't like this style of song it's not for me however with Cyprus I can listen to it I can enjoy it um, it's not on the level of Austria but neither is it as low as Luxembourg. So I'm going to put it uh, here into my good category. And next we have uh, Latvia, Dawn's Hollow. So this song, um, I actually want, it was my second favorite in the Latvian national selection. I really liked the first song and I can't pronounce the name of the artist and I can't remember the name of the song um, but it was the duet uh, that was done where they switched who was on the piano and who was on who was singing and then they came together from time I just love that song so much but this is not about that this is about Dawns and Hollow um, vocals incredible song usually it would be something I could enjoy and listen to even though it's on the slower tempo side um, 
there's just something about it that is not clicking with me. I feel like it's lacking a bit of originality, maybe. Maybe that's it, I don't know. Um, but it's just, uh, yeah, I find it, honestly, personally, average. Um, it's, uh, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't put it on the same level as, as Sylvester, Belton, Lithuania or Estonia. Um, I think that Latvia, unfortunately for me, is the weakest of the Baltics uh, this season. Uh, and we're on to our final artist, and that is Windows 95 Man from Finland. Is the performance fun? Yes. Is the studio vocal great? Yeah, actually it's fun and it really matches the 90s. However, the song itself doesn't really appeal to me personally. Um, and genre wise doesn't really fit. I mean, I can enjoy fun Eurovision entries. Um, and I really appreciate that they, they're bringing it to the stage. Unfortunately, it's just not for me. So there we have it. And you see it kind of lines up pretty nicely. We have a top five of Croatia, Norway, uh, Switzerland, Ireland and Belgium. Are there biases there? Of course, it's my personal opinion. So of course there are biases. Um, and then in the great and could move up or down depending on stage and staging and live performance. I expect to maybe move up is Joost, uh, Kaleen, um, honestly I don't know, I don't see it moving from where it is. Um, Angelina Mango, Angelica Mango, I don't know how, which one it is, I should have looked it up. Um, with La Noia, it could go higher maybe, um, but I think it's going to stay where it is. Oli Alexander definitely has the potential to go higher into my potential tops. Uh, I don't think Saba will go any higher, uh, nor Megara, nor Nebulosa. So I think it, my grade is pretty set. I mean, some might drop, but that's where we are for now. And we have majority of songs, not a majority, but the, the largest number in the good category. This is not in order of uh, my preferences to most uh, liked to least liked, it's just the way I was doing it. Um, and some songs can definitely be elevated and go up beyond good. Uh, some may drop, uh, it really depends. Like Ico, for example, could drop depending on how it comes together live. Same with Celia, um, Australia could go up. Um, Estonia might drop, I don't know. The ones I see staying there are Teodora, uh, Raven, potentially could go up, but staying there most likely. Um, and Luna, I think, is going to stay there, even though I really enjoyed the, the song uh, personally. Uh, on my average ones, we, we have uh, Armenia, we have Greece, we have Georgia, Portugal, Sweden, Luxembourg and Latvia. I think from the first three, you can see some commonalities um, in the genre and just why it's not it's not my personal taste. Um, and uh, yeah, again, girl bop's not my thing, so that's why Georgia and Luxembourg are there. Sweden's not hitting for me yet. Uh, maybe it will, um, but I, I, I find it quite bland. Uh, Portugal, I'm sure, may get higher, but for now, I haven't listened to it enough and Latvia, it's been slipping down for me, Latvia. Uh, not for me is probably not going to change uh, unless Moldova perform miracles, which they are very well capable of. We have France, Iceland, Moldova, Malta, Albania and Finland. And there you, we have it. Those are my songs and my tier list. And that will end. I realize it's got dark in the middle of all of that, but that will end the video of my tier list. I will probably try to do a semi-final running order prediction if I can. I'm traveling again <laughs> at the weekend, um, but uh, and then I'm going to Madrid next weekend for the pre-party. So things will probably change a lot, but I'm going to try and do some predictions of running order and also of, what is that behind me? Oh, it's a door. Uh, <laughs> running order predictions and uh, of the semi-final uh, qualifiers. Uh, and semi-final one is going to be horrific to predict. I 
we're going to lose something, one, two amazing songs out of there. Nobody's going to be happy with the results of semi-final one, I think. Um, but having said that, I hope you enjoyed uh, this. Um, as I said, all my person, my own personal taste. I did not rank two songs, obviously. Um, clearly in the video you saw that. Um, I will not be. Uh, that's a decision I've taken um, that I, I just am um, not going to do it for personal reasons that I don't particularly want to get into. Um, but of course the songs are there, so uh, they may feature in the predictions video, but um, I'm not ranking the songs in, in my tears uh, because I'm not listening to them. Uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this was quite long. Um, maybe I can cut it a bit. Took a lot longer than I thought. Anyway, th th that's my tier list. And uh, if you want more content, please like, subscribe, comment, wherever it may be. Watch some more videos, reactions. I'll put them around and about. Um, and I still think I may react more to some songs um, when uh, after Madrid, when I hear them live, I'll maybe reassess a bit how I've been thinking about soccer. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Sorry this has been so long. And I hope that you have a wonderful evening and a wonderful rest of the week. And all the best and peace and love to everybody. Ciao.